All right. Welcome to my second media podcast. Um, I'm shooting this in between uh, waiting for Game of Thrones to come on and trying to get a bed to bed at a decent hour because I got some early morning stuff I got to take care of. But uh, so uh, I got to talk to you about a very important subject, and that is babies and restaurants. All right, it has to stop. Um, I don't have any kids. And uh, one of the reasons I don't have kids is because I like to go to restaurants. And I believe that restaurants are for adults. Adults pay for the food. Adults are going out to enjoy the atmosphere. Restaurants are not for kids. And they're not really for babies. Okay? Not, you can make an argument that some restaurants are for kids. But for babies, there's just no argument there. Restaurants are not for babies. So why do you insist on bringing your baby to a restaurant? It makes no sense. The baby doesn't enjoy it. The baby doesn't know really where it is. It just knows it's with its mommy and daddy, and it's still getting the same amount of attention, just in a bigger room with more people and more noise. I went to a restaurant today, and a nice enough couple, they got their baby. A young baby. Now why aren't these people at home? They have a baby. But why shouldn't they just stay home and take care of it? Not only did they bring their stupid baby, they bring the stupid baby's toys. They're, they're, they're catering to the baby, they're giving it toys, the baby's throwing the toys. It, it, it consumes the entire restaurant and all the atmosphere. There's nothing you can pay attention to except for the stupid baby that these stupid people brought into the restaurant. So my uh, advice, my decree, if you will, is to please, if you have children, if you have a baby, here's the first rule. The first rule is you don't see the inside of a restaurant with your baby until the baby is at least old enough to understand the words, shut up, we're in a restaurant. Okay? That's number one. So if your baby can't understand English, if it doesn't understand instructions, you just stay home. Okay? Or get a sitter. Here's an idea. Get a sitter and leave your baby with someone else. Oh, you can't leave your baby with someone else? Well, then you can't go to a restaurant. That's the rule. Okay? I know you people who have kids, oh, you're tired, and you've, you've had a rough day. Well, go the extra mile and get a sitter. Because I'll tell you another thing. The money you're going to spend on your, your kids or your baby, you could give that to the sitter. Okay? You've got the food that they don't appreciate at all. I mean, let's face it. Any kid that you bring to a restaurant, what are they going to order? If they're under the age of, like, 12, as, as uh, my nephews were and my nieces, uh, they're going to order chicken fingers and french fries. Okay, you have chicken fingers and french fries at home. You have them at home. The sitter can make them, there's a microwave, and if, they, if the sitter can't handle that, you can make them ahead of time. And paying for the uh, chicken fingers and french fries is the money you could use to pay the sitter, okay? So you don't need to bring your loud, obnoxious children to a restaurant. I'm trying to have a nice time. I'm paying to eat out. And part of the payment is not to be in a room with children. Okay? I have a quiet life because I don't have children. My life becomes less quiet because you brought your children, insisted on bringing your children into a public place, which they can't handle, by the way. Now, some people, they discipline their children. They shut them up. They know what to do. Those people... I love those people. But here's the rule. If your kid gets out of hand, if your kid starts crying, if your kid won't listen, the rule of thumb is one of the adults has to take that kid out of the restaurant and stop ruining it for everybody else. And if you miss your entire meal because you got to sit in the car with some crying kid, that's your problem. You had the kid. Okay? That's the price you pay for having children. I shouldn't be involved with your children. This couple that had the baby, 
had toys flying everywhere, and I actually at one point had to bend over and hand the toy back. I don't want to do that. I want to have a nice quiet meal. I want to relax in the atmosphere of the restaurant. I want to see other adults. I don't want to see kids. I don't want to talk to kids. I don't want to interact with children at a restaurant. Who wants that? No one. So if you have children, get a sitter. Okay, well, that had nothing to do with media. This is the media podcast. Um, so I will say this. Uh, I hope all our friends and associates in Boston are very safe. Uh, I'm glad it seems that the nightmare uh, up there is, for the most part, over. Um, but in regards to media, I will say, uh, fuck the media. Fuck CNN and MSNBC and Fox News. Because, first off, I tried to watch CNN, and it's like impossible. Because it, it's almost as if CNN wasn't prepared for an actual news story to start breaking. Like, they actually couldn't handle it. They're too used to these news stories that either mean nothing or have this um, sense about them that they've already decided how they're going to play out. So this event obviously was very chaotic and crazy and at one moment you had John King. Now John King I call the douche of news. He's he's one of the worst. I can't stand him. I, please, John King, if you're listening to this, just retire or do what you really want to do which is like host a game show or become the center of attention because I don't think you want to be a news reporter because to me a news reporter uh, reports facts and facts that they have checked now you already got reamed by Jon Stewart and that was awesome but le allow me to reiterate uh, basically what he said you don't come on the air with an unsubstantiated claim from an anonymous source that the bomber's in custody and has dark skin. He's a dark skin person. What, what information is that? All that seemed to serve was to get people uh, scared and pissed off at potentially this vague dark skin person, maybe? I, I, I don't know what purpose that information served. And you even acknowledged, even as you said it, you didn't have a substantiated claim. So how about this? How about not reporting it until you can confirm it? That would be, to me, what a responsible uh, person would do. Uh, it was just a nightmare. If you, if you get a chance, Google John Stewart and John King on that thing and, and watch that segment, because he summed it up way better than I did. So I'm watching CNN sort of trying to grapple with this. They're, try they're trying to make entertainment out of it, which really is just disgusting to me. They're playing commercials, you know, the whole thing. So finally, I I I'm sort of like giving up, and I go, well, let me see if the other major two n news networks can do anything with this. So first I flip over to Fox News, because you, ha you have to admit, Fox News, when they do report news, Sometimes they do report it. So I flip over there, and who do I see? Sean Hannity trying to connect the dots. Ten seconds of that, I was gone. No way. I flip over to MSNBC. I swear to God, now this is during the, uh, the MIT shooting and subsequent chase. I flip on MSNBC. They're re-showing the president giving his speech. There's, you know, someone's just been killed. The chase is going on in Boston. Those guys are giving the president another commercial. I, I don't understand. So finally I say to myself, where can I get some information? Well, obviously the internet. I go to the internet and I go to Reddit. Well, Reddit had the most amazing coverage of the Boston incidents. It was minute by minute. It was coming up. They, they sent me links to, I could listen to the, uh, the Boston PD's um, you know, radio, the police scanner was amazing and I got up to the minute um, you know up to the minute sources on all the stuff and that was great 
But it, but I and I know I flip on CNN while I was looking at that, just marveling at the fact that CNN was easily ten minutes behind the curve or more. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, CNN just they just didn't do it. Uh, does CNN not have an internet connection? Does CNN never heard of Reddit? They've reported on Reddit before. They've reported about everything on the internet, and yet they can't seem to use the very tools on the internet. And at the same time, I will say this. At some point, the Boston PD worried that the bombers would somehow look on Twitter, look on the internet, and get tactical information. And I understand that worry. However, when you stop and think about it logically, how is a guy being chased by the cops going to go to Twitter or Spotify or any of these other websites, read or listen to all this information, aggregate it in his head, figure out what's good and what's not good, and from that, draw tactical information. In my view, the odds of that happening were astronomically high. And the fact that they were being chased by the police and had already been shot at meant that they were probably way too hyped up to be cruising the internet at that point. There, there was maybe a slight chance there was other accomplices, you know, like Microchip from the Punisher, if they had their own version of him. The microchip was, you know, Punisher was the guy who killed the criminals. Microchip was the guy who stayed in the van and, like, gave him the intel. Like, if they had one of those guys, then fine. That might have happened. But in this case... There was no way they were trying to uh, shoot these guys and kill them and capture them. There's no way these guys have time to go on the internet and search through all that nonsense to maybe pick out a tweet like, Hey, the police are in my house on this street. You, they don't know when that tweet went up, really. Uh, you know, ten minutes go by and that tweet is dead uh, or, you know, no good. So... Really, I don't think that was a big deal. And Reddit, they're half substantiated, but some unsubstantiated claims, uh, they turned out to be mostly true. Uh, or at the very least, they would send me a link and they'd say, go to here for the latest information. A lot of what they were getting was either from other people in Boston or the local Boston affiliate. So, uh, I just found it very interesting that you could actually get more information on a breaking news story on a place like Reddit and a place like Twitter than you could on CNN, supposedly, you know, this great bastion of news. Uh, very sad and pathetic. Confirms what I already sort of knew about uh, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News. I really only use those news sources to see what other people who are too lazy to do their own research know. Uh, in my view, you can't depend upon them. And uh, this incident, to me, proves that. So, anyhow, that's my opinion, and uh, that's the media podcast for this week. We didn't get any emails, but if you'd like to send an email, uh, shoot one over to thefixesin at comcast.net, and I'll answer your questions or your hate mail or whatever you got. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by uh, MyDigitalComics.com. Uh, check them out. They've got all sorts of free digital downloads. And also RandomComics.net, one of our longtime sponsors uh, for all your online print comics. Order them right now. They've got a great selection. That's it for the media podcast this week. I'm Tony D. See you next time.